Greetings in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ from St. Peter's Lutheran Church in Caseyville. This is a video recording of a live worship service at St. Peter's Lutheran Church, Sunday, August 23rd, 2020. We apologize for any glitches or skips inherent in recording a live service. May God bless you as you gather with us around his word to receive his blessings. Good morning. We gather in this place that we might once again in person gather as God's people and celebrate the gifts that he has given us because we do indeed receive so much from our God that we don't think about all yet. So we gather now again to celebrate those things and to celebrate the blessings and to begin a worship service. For this service we use divine service setting one beginning on page 151. Please rise for the invocation. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <clears throat> if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, whose mercy has given his Son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins, as a called ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. But we will bless the Lord. As for me, I have set my king. I will tell of the decree. The Lord said to me, You are my son. Today I have Praise the Lord, all nations. Exalt him, all peoples. For great is his steadfast love toward us. And the faithfulness of the Lord is forever. Praise the Lord. Glory be to the Father and to the Son. As was as it was in the beginning, bless. What but we will bless the Lord. In peace, let us pray to the Lord for the peace from above and for our salvation. Let us pray to the Lord for the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all. Let us pray to the Lord for this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise. Let us pray to the Lord.
the truth, and the life, that we may boldly confess him to be the Christ, and steadfastly walk in the way that leads to eternal life. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated for the reading of the lesson. The Old Testament reading for the 12th Sunday after Pentecost is from Isaiah chapter 51. Listen to me, you who pursue righteousness, you who seek the Lord. Look to the rock from which you have been hewn to the, and to the quarry from which you have been dug. Look to Abraham your father and Sarah who bore you, for he has but one when I call, he was but one when I called him, that I might bless him and multiply him. For the Lord comforts Zion, he comforts all her wasted places, he makes her wilderness like Eden, her desert like the garden of the Lord. Joy and gladness will be found in her, thanksgiving and the voice of song. Give attention to me, my people, and give ear to me, my nation. For a law will go out from me, and will set my justice for a light to the peoples. My righteousness draws near, my salvation has gone out, and my arms will judge the peoples. The coastlands hope for me, and for my arms they wait. Lift up your eyes to the heavens, and look at the earth beneath. For the heavens vanish like smoke, and the earth will wear out like a garment, and they who dwell in it will die in like manner. But my salvation will be forever, my righteousness will never, dis will never dismay. This is the word of the Lord. Fear the Lord, you his saints, for those who fear him lack nothing. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. The epistle reading is from Romans chapters 11 and 12. Oh, the depths of the riches and wisdom and knowledge of God! How unsearchable are his judgments, and how inscrutable his ways! For who has known the mind of the Lord, or who has been his counselor? Or who has given a gift to him that he might be repaired? For from him and through him and to him are all things. To him be glory forever. Amen. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be tra transformed by the renewing of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. For by the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned, for as in one body we are all many members, the members do not all have the same function. So we, though many, are one body in Christ, and individual members of, the, of one another. Having gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, let us use them. If prophets to prophesy to our faith, if service in our serving, if one who teaches in his teaching, in one who exhorts in his exhortation, one who contributes in his generosity, one who leads with zeal, and one who acts of mercy with cheerfulness. This, too, is the word of the Lord. Thank you, God. We rise and speak together the verse of the day in preparation for the reading of the Holy Gospel. 
Hallelujah. You are fellow citizens of the saints and members of the household of God, blessed on the, built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Christ himself being the cornerstone. Hallelujah. The Holy Gospel and the basis of our meditation for today is from the Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 16th chapter. And now when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do people say the Son of Man is? And they said, Some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter replied, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. And then he strictly charged his disciples to tell no one that he was the Christ. This is the Gospel of the Lord. We confess our faith in God using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated and we sing the hymn of the day.
mercy and peace be to you from God our Father, through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. He said that to them, but who do you say that I am? Simon Peter replied, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. This is our text. The disciples had been with Jesus for a couple of years by now, and things were starting to dawn on them. They were starting to understand or at least get a glimmer of what was going on sometimes. Not that often. But early, very early on, Nathan, when he was called as a disciple, declared Jesus the Son of God simply because Jesus said that he had seen Nathan a long way off. Not Nathan, Nathaniel. And Jesus' first miracle showed the disciples that he was capable of more than just prophecy. That he was indeed capable of doing miracles for God, of doing things that were out of the ordinary, and that's what a miracle is. Something that just can't happen by the natural state of affairs. People, the disciples started to see what was going on. They started to see other things. They saw Jesus walk on water. And they responded to this in different ways. And Jesus walked on water. Peter immediately, always being the one that kind of brash, had to do something, uh, wanted to walk on the water too, but truly understood that. And they began to worship him at times. And to say fairly fully that he was the Son of God. But today's gospel lesson may take another step. At Jesus' kind of encouragement, they take this one step further than what they have. Now, to us, it may not seem that way. Because we're so used to what's going on in and, and, and the various titles and names that we give for Jesus and kind of equating them, that to us, the Son of God is not this necessarily the same thing as the Christ or the Messiah. But we see it that way, because we know that it's that way. But they didn't, and so this was quite a step for them. And it all comes out of what Jesus is doing and the fact that he confronts them with this. Because, yeah, he's preached enough and he's gone around the country for two years, and yeah, generally in Israel and Galilee, he's known. People come from far and wide to see him, to be healed to see the miracles, to listen to him expound on what God wants, and on the Old Testament scriptures, and what the prophets have foretold. And so we see him starting to, to deal with his disciples and trying to kind of get them to figure out what's going on here, what really he's all about. And he does this by the question he asks, who do people say that I am? And who do you say that I am? They're two different questions and they respond in two entirely different ways. And it takes time for us to kind of look at this and see what's going on. First of all, we want to see where he's at. This is a part of his uh, ministry where Jesus is in Cana. And Cana is a kind of a piece of ground that was given to the tribe of Dan. The tribe of Dan was not one of your most well-liked tribes, not the most esteemed tribe. Uh, I won't say they were good. poor cousins, but kind of. Yeah, they were a tribe of Israel, but not the, the, one of the big ones like Judah or the Levites, you know, people that had an outstanding uh, position of their own to hold. So this was the land of Dan. Dan and when Jesus came here and talks about being the, the Christ, the anointed one of God, he's in a region that is basically populated by Gentiles. Idol worship dominates. Uh, the place where he is today is called Benius. I, I don't know what that is, but it was dedicated to the worship of idols. And um, particularly the, the, the Greek god Pan. But the thing was is that there was a lot of things going on that didn't fit into what Jesus was doing or that the disciples would see something going on. So when he 
ask them who the Son of Man is, people say the Son of Man is, he uses a name for himself that kind of is particular to him. They call him the Son of God. He always refers to himself as the Son of Man. Uh, I think to highlight the fact that he is human, that he is God in human form, that he is in fact something that you don't see every day. But when he asks them to kind of describe what people are saying about him, we get into all kinds of understandings that kind of jive with what God has predicted in the Old Testament, but not entirely. You know, the, the one about him being John the Baptist probably comes mostly from Herod, because Herod's kind of living under this guilt that he had John killed. You know, of his own desires and stuff, he never would have done that. But it was because of his wife and her daughter that he let that happen. Kind of got tricked into it. And he lives with this guilt now that he allowed John to die. Um, there's a lot of people that say he's Elijah because that is also predicted, that Elijah would come back and would kind of announce that the Christ had arrived, that the Messiah, the anointed one of God who was going to fulfill all of God's promises, had arrived. And so that was kind of important. Um, Jeremiah is a little bit of a different thing. The reason a lot of times they say that Jeremiah or one of the other prophets is, Jeremiah did not go into exile when the rest of ex Israel went into exile. Jeremiah and a few people kind of escaped to Egypt and that upper part of Africa. And so people assume that since when this all happens, when the Ark of the Covenant disappeared, that maybe the people in Je that went with Jeremiah, and Jeremiah took the, the Ark of the Covenant with them, and they would know where it was. And so there was kind of this hope that when the Messiah would come, that Jeremiah would come back and bring the, the Ark of the Covenant back to Jerusalem. So they would once again have the Ark of the Covenant in the temple. So that's what people were looking for. Yeah, they were looking for this Messiah. They were looking for this promise to be fulfilled. But they, they weren't buying the fact that Jesus was it. Until their kind of disciples especially are put on the spot. And it comes to that. They ask specifically, who do the, you say that I am? And this is important because it is a confession that all Christians need to make. You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Now, Jesus immediately says of what Peter has just said, because it seemed kind of odd, but immediately says this, that you didn't come upon this yourself. You didn't just figure this one out for yourself. This is something that God will yield to you, that you might understand that I am the Christ. And that's important because that's the way it works for all of us. It's also especially interesting that later, this self-same Peter kind of makes that thing available, that knowledge kind of showers it out on people through his own uh, epistle, and makes a big point to that when he says, for no prophecy has ever been produced by the will of man, but man spoke from God as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. This is not something we can do for ourselves. Martin Luther was very explicit about this in his talks about, when he talks about the uh, third article of the Apostles' Creed and about the Holy Spirit. He specifically says that I believe that I cannot find my own reason or strength come from my Lord Jesus Christ or believe in Him. It's impossible for any one of us to do that. It's something that has to be worked in our heart by God, by the Holy Spirit. Working through the Word, working through the sacraments, working through all the things that He does. But especially those things that we call the means of grace. The Word of God, 
with holy baptism, holy communion. The place that things that we gather around as God's people. Yes, we say we come to church and you know this is very kind of important during this pandemic that we come to church in person. But it's the gathering of the people that is the church. And we gather around God's word and against around his sacraments because that's where he promises to be actively working. Sure, there's other times when he works in our lives, but those three things, the Bible, the Word of God, the uh, Holy Baptism, and Holy Communion, are where he specifically works in our lives visibly, in contact with us, that we might be enriched, because we can't do this on our own. We can't ever bring this about on our own. It's the thing that happens when people say, well, you know, I don't have to go to church. I can go out and go fishing or go out and hike in nature, and I can see all the glories of God's creation, and I can come you know, to faith in that, and that can be enriching to me. And while it's true it can be enriching, it is not the places where God promises that he will actively be working among us. When we came out with the, not this hymn, but the one before us, we started calling these divine services. And the reason for doing that was so that we would know that the main things that happen here, when we gather as God's people, when we go through this service, or if not just as much when we you know, listen to it or, or see it on YouTube, what happens there is all God's doing. Probably a little more active here because we have uh, access to the sacraments, not just the Word. But the Word does it too. And in this service, in what we do again and again and again, in the liturgy and all those things that we do, the confession of sin, the absolution, the prayers, all the parts of the service that we've done, who knows how many times, is where God has just basically put little building blocks together to build it into our lives. And this is the point where Jesus kind of brings this all Peter said that you are the Son of God and you are the Christ of God. God, Jesus says something new. First of all, he calls him Peter. He calls him Peter because Peter is Greek for rocks, actually. And so that's kind of an indication of what the, the basis of faith is all about. But it's not Peter himself. But it's his confession given here. Who do I say you are? I say you are the Messiah, the promised one of God, who's going to fulfill all the promises of God and redeem us and make us God's own forever. It's that confession that the church is built on. And it's that confession that we gather when we can around His Word and Sacrament to build and to strengthen and to make part of our lives. And that's probably the thing that's most important for us in this era when, like we say, I said to Deb this morning, begin to wonder if every, everything will ever go back to what we thought of as normal again. So we have to remember that God is always here and active among us. Whether we are able to physically gather as his people, or whether we gather as his people around his word, we are his people gathered to him that he might work in our lives and make us his own forever. Because he is the Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the Living God, the one who came to redeem us, to buy us back, and to change our lives into eternal satisfaction for all time. That we might live with him in his kingdom and live and live under all his blessings for all time. Amen. And the peace of God which surpasses all human understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus unto eternal life. Amen.
refreshed us through this salutary gift, and we implore you of your mercy. You would strengthen us through the same, in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you.